Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 549. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about baby boomers' retirement regrets. And this comes to us through an article on CNBC.com. It was written by Bob Pisani. And the name of the article is Baby Boomers Face Retirement Crisis, Little Savings, High Health Costs, and Unrealistic Expectations. So this really caught my eye because through the survey I've been doing for the show, I've noticed that we have a lot of people that are baby boomers. And so I thought this would be right up your alley to be talking about what are the regrets that baby boomers have about retirement and what are the difficulties that they are facing so that you can get a jump start on it and not have these problems plague you. I also think it's really interesting whenever they do these kinds of surveys to get actual statistics from retirees or soon to be retirees to hear what they're saying because it's based on real people, real facts, real things that are happening. And that's always something good to talk about and see if there's something we can do to help. The article has two bullet points. The first bullet point says it's National Retirement Planning Week, which means it's time for another round of depressing stats about how unprepared we all are for retirement. And the second bullet point says, the Insured Retirement Institute, which represents the annuity industry, highlights all the problems facing boomers, too little savings, underestimating health costs, and unrealistic expectations of how much retirement income they will need. And the article says, April is National Financial Literacy Month, but this week is National Retirement Planning Week which means it's time for yet another round of depressing statistics about how unprepared we all are for retirement. Let's focus on baby boomers, those born between 1946 and 1964, ages 55 to 73. Nearly half, 47%, are already in retirement. That's 34 million retired baby boomers. So I want to pause there and say, While this is looking at baby boomers and the youngest baby boomer is 55 and nearly 47% are already retired, I think it's important to talk about it because even people who are 40 to 45, you're really in that important zone of retirement planning savings. That's when it's really key to start boosting how much you're saving for retirement, to really start focusing on it because you're amount of time is rapidly approaching and you're in that finite time space. So it's really important for younger people, not just baby boomers, to be thinking about this. And even for people who are starting out their careers, because after all, someday you will be this age too, and it comes a lot faster than you think. So it's good to start planning early because it makes it so much easier, costs less money, and you can be really successful because you have longer to compound. The article goes on to say, our dose of depressing data comes courtesy of the Insured Retirement Institute, which represents the annuity industry. The group's annual report, Boomer Expectations for Retirement, highlights all the problems. Too little savings, underestimating health costs, and unrealistic expectations of how much retirement income they will need. So first, let's talk about two little savings. The three legs of the retirement stool are social security, private pensions, and personal savings. None is in great shape. The average social security check is $14,000 a year, hardly a cushy retirement. Only 23% of boomers ages 56 to 61 expect to receive income from a private company pension plan and only 38% of older boomers expect a pension. As for personal savings, I'll make it simple. Most boomers have not saved nearly enough. 
In the worst case, it is really bad. 45% of boomers have zero savings for retirement. Time out. I've got to pause there. What? 45% of boomers have zero savings for retirement. Yikes. Now, were they expecting that Social Security was going to rescue them somehow? Were they thinking they were just going to keep working until they died? What went wrong here? I don't know if we're going to find out in this article, but this is under the two little savings category. So I assume that what they're saying here is just that people didn't save for retirement. They just weren't worrying about it. They just weren't thinking about it, planning for it, lived a little bit too much in the present and didn't think about the future or maybe got into debt and started spending money for the future today. The second section is called underestimating healthcare costs. Retirees routinely underestimate health expenses, particularly long-term care costs. Many simply don't understand the system. Shockingly, 50% of those in the survey say they have not factored in the cost of long-term care insurance because they say they will rely on Medicare. But Medicare provides no coverage for long-term care. Only 8% of boomers say they have purchased a long-term care policy. We are all going to live a lot longer than we think. In about half of all married couples over 65, one partner will survive to at least age 95. Wow, age 95 for one of the partners. That is a lot higher than I had seen in terms of life expectancy. So that is amazing. I do want to reiterate that yes, Medicare does not provide coverage for long-term care. There is Medicaid, which is if you are basically on welfare and you need skilled nursing care, which is the high level of nursing care, then Medicaid can cover you if all of your assets are gone. You have to spend down all of your assets and basically be destitute in order for that to cover you. And then the state takes over. That's not a desirable situation, nor is it realistic if you have a decent amount of assets and you want to be leaving some of your assets to your children. Long-term care can be very expensive, and that's not even talking about if there's a mental issue. I'm not talking about Alzheimer's or dementia. I'm just talking about having someone help you get dressed, bathe, feed yourself, things like that where it can get very difficult for an elderly person. And yes, long-term care policies are very expensive. So it's difficult for people to be able to afford those and have some kind of coverage for these higher expenses later on. So this can be one of the reasons why people are so destitute is that their healthcare costs were a lot higher than they thought, and they've spent down a lot of their retirement proceeds, perhaps. The third reason is underestimating retirement income. We are underestimating how much we are going to spend. The average amount spent by Americans 65 to 74 is $55,000 a year, but most baby boomers don't think they will need anywhere near that amount. Indeed, 60% say they will need less than that to live on. It goes on to say, a lot of people are kidding themselves. Expected annual retirement income need, and here it's got some statistics, 44% say less than $35,000. 26% said they need $35,000 to $55,000. 16% say they need $55,000 to $75,000 a year. And 14% say they need more than $75,000 a year. What's the backup plan? What happens when a lot of people realize they haven't thought this whole retirement thing through very well? Here's the plan. Downsize, go back to work, or hit up the kids. Okay, I want to pause there. Wow. Okay, so first of all, 70% of people think they're going to need $55,000 or less per year in retirement. That's including your housing, your food, your entertainment, your travel, clothing, taxes, medical care. That seems a little on the low side to me for people to be estimating. And perhaps that's where part of this is going wrong is they're not thinking that they need as much income as they need to survive and have a nice lifestyle. So let's look at this section where it says, what will you do if you run out of money? 58% said they would downsize 
and live on Social Security alone. Well, that's interesting because you can downsize. If you own a house, you can move to a smaller home, and some people do use that to supplement their retirement savings. But living on Social Security alone, as I mentioned, the average check is only $14,000 a year. So that's not really going to be a good plan. So that's going to be very difficult to live on year in and year out and have a decent lifestyle. The second thing they said they would do if they ran out of money is return to work. 37% said they would return to work. Wow, a third of people are saying they would return to work, but how are you gonna go back to work at age 65 to 74? I mean, they're even doing away with Walmart greeters. So now I don't know what people are going to be able to do in terms of finding a job. That's going to be a very difficult thing. Number three, They said if they ran out of money, they would ask their children for assistance. And that was only 6%. The article goes on to say, the part about returning to work or staying at work is already happening. One third of employed boomers age 67 to 72 have postponed retirement, the study says. Do they have any regrets? Plenty. Among those not confident they did a good job preparing for retirement, the top two things they wish they had done differently, 63% said they wish they had saved more, and 58% said they wish they'd started saving earlier. Let's hope Generation X, Millennials, and Gen Z will do a better job planning for retirement than baby boomers have done. End of article. I'll post a link to the article in the show notes and on the podcast page on my website. I don't know where the boomers are getting their jobs when they're 67 years old plus, but here's what I do know. It's time for people to think about multiple streams of income and what they can do about their income stream way in advance. And that's why you wanna think about the wealth building formula being money, compounding, and time. And if you're out of time, that means you're out of years to compound, That means you either need to save more or you need to be a better investor and compound at a higher rate. And that's one of the reasons why I put the Wealth Heiress checklist in the back of the Wealth Heiress book to make sure that you're doing all the things all the way along preparing for retirement so you don't get to retirement and have a nasty surprise because you don't have enough income, you don't have enough retirement funds. So in summary, I would say it's never too early to start thinking about retirement. It's never too early to start planning for it, saving for it, investing for it. You want to give this a lot of thought in advance because the time to be running out of money is not when you're elderly. You want to have a plan that is going to allow you to invest well and of course be contributing to your retirement plans so that you can have money grow tax deferred or tax free whether that's a Roth IRA or whether that's your 401k or other retirement plan, you want to take advantage of those things. It's super important that that is one of your spending priorities is planning for retirement. And I know that's difficult because if you're younger, you also have to think about perhaps paying for your kid's college or buying a home. There's all these big purchases ahead of you and it seems like retirement is way off into the distance but it comes up fast. The financial requirements are quite a lot, and in many cases, more than people think. So it's never too early to start planning, start thinking about the lifestyle you want, the income you're going to live on, and how much it's going to take to get you there. You can use the calculator at moneychimp.com go to the calculator section. You can put in the number of years you have to compound. You can put in different compounding rates and you can see how much money that would grow to in the future. I also have calculators on my website at lindapjones.com that you can take a look at as well. That's gonna give you some kind of a ballpark so you have at least an idea for what kind of an amount of money you're looking at having later on in life. Of course, it's not going to be exact because You won't know that until you know exactly what your rate of return is, but you can estimate over time what rate of return you might achieve and that can help you make some realistic estimates. So there's not much we can really do about high health costs. All we can do to defend against that is either to buy insurance to help with some of that or to save more money or to keep yourself in super great health. Just one more thought, and that is I'm always encouraging you to have a side hustle. And I think having 
something on the side that is an income generator for you that will continue into your retirement would be a really great hobby to have or thing to be working on before you retire. So if you have some kind of a side business that you can do, or you have something that's an online business you can start or a way to monetize that will continue into your retirement. For example, maybe you're really handy working on cars and you can restore cars into the future. That would be a great thing to be able to do into retirement as a way to have fun with something you enjoy, but you're also getting paid for it very well. Or perhaps you're an accountant and you have a side business where you help people do their taxes. And after you retire, you continue to have that business and do people's taxes. Or maybe you start an online store and you do that on the side while you're working. And then when you retire, you can continue to have that online store generate income for you. These are things that you need to start thinking about now that can be income that can continue to work for you into your retirement years because there's no way that social security is going to be enough. And it sounds like most people don't have enough saved in retirement. So having that ongoing income stream is going to be super important. Things to start thinking about now and planning for now can make a huge difference going forward. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.